Well, hello there, guys. Got something a little different for you tonight. We got an old precision apparatus tube tester. This was a this was a portable tube tester. Uh, I believe this dates back to like World War II around there. Of course, back then, I mean, tube was king. You know, everything ran on tube, so. You know they had to they had to repair stuff in the field and everything, so this actually had a battery, a big square battery that would go you would take this face off and put the battery inside. There's actually a pencil sketch. I've had this apart and somebody sketched with pencil how to hook this up, and the old battery hookups were basically just rusted off, so I unhooked that and <clears throat> cap the wires off so we wouldn't have anything dangerous happen but anyhow this was given to me by a good friend it was given to him by one of his friends that just happened to get a hold get a hold of it somehow and so i ended up with it he gave it to me uh, dropped it off he lives close by and he plays guitar and owns two amps so it's kind of a community thing, but I just wanted to, wanted to get it going and all that, and I think he did too. So I was lucky enough, there was a guy on eBay that was selling the original owner's manuals, copies, but he does a nice job. It's all ring bound, and let's see if I can get this in the shot, in the... Uh, in the middle of the instruction book, there's a fold out with the whole wiring diagram to the tube tester itself. That's pretty gold information. So, and it was cheap too. This guy's right in New York, uh, Glendale, New York. Can't remember the seller's name now, but I bought this a few years back. This came with, with the tube tester. These are just extra uh, tube data and stuff like that. And even some prices on some of the uh, some tube testers. There's another one in the back. 99 bucks. I mean, the one you're looking at is pretty pretty upscale compared to that. I mean, these weren't cheap back in the day. So, then there was another book that I, I think this might have come with it too. This is 1947, RCA tube data, decibel chats, there's all kinds of cool stuff in there. So anyways, I wanted to show you guys how this works. So, you know, back in the day, like I said, tubes were king, TVs, radios, you know, communications devices, everything had tubes in it. So, you know, guys, they they would have to have these to, uh, you know, repair men to go out and repair TVs and radios and things like that. So, what you would have inside this thing, you have these scrolls, okay? And you can change these and it has all these tubes on them and you got this scroll wheel that you can move back and forth now I'm gonna try to get you guys down in here so you can get a good peek at this okay so I've got a 6v6 tube in here right now and there's there's all kinds of different pin combinations for different tubes so once you find out where your tube fits and in the slot it goes in, then you make sure you got it on the chat. Here's a 6v6. Now what you have is this. You have, have different sections. I'm trying to find my little golf club so I can point to you. Let's just use the Sharpie for tonight. Sorry about that. So you see... You find the tube, 6v6, then you have the section. You have A, B, C, and D. So then you have four numbers next to 6v6. You have 1, 7, 
I think that's eight and two. So what you do, you find section A. You look up here, that's marked section A, section B, section C. Then you have section D, E, F, and so on. So what you do, you find section A needs to be on one. So I have section A on one. There's the number, one, two, three, right up the, up the deal, right? So then we find section B, which is this one, and that needs to be on seven, which that's what it says right here. Section C needs to be on eight. So you put that on eight. You have to just turn that dial, you know, till you find the right number. I think it's three notches over the five. So then we have section D, which is section D right here. So you come over two. Because there's a two there, you go one, two. And you flip that lever all the way up. And then you go to... Uh, E is nothing, and then section F is 3, 4, and 5. So you come down to F right here. You know, you got D, E, F. Then you go 3, 4, and 5. So those 3, 4, and 5 need to, to line up with the F. The rest of them will stay off. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to hit this this uh, read meter button. And you're going to see this red light light up, and this thing will hum. It'll turn on, and it's actually going to test this tube. So you push down. Uh, there it goes. Let's try that again. Okay, here we go. Had the wrong deal. All right, you can see that's right up in the good, right? And that's the line. And if it was bad, you'd be down on the replace tube. So once you get all these, you find your tube on the chat and line up all the corresponding numbers and letters where they go. And then you hit your test button. Hold down on it, and it'll once it settles out, and that's what you get. So that one's good. And now, if you was going to do a different tube, you got to have different, different scroll chat or or the supplemental tube data book, which this has some some of the newer ones in it, obsolete types, things like that. You know, these are old tube checks, so some of it is really obsolete, and some of it's, you know, for, like, TVs and and things like that, so. But you can, te you can test, you know, 12AX7s and 6L6, 6V6, KTs, 77s, 88s, that's, all that stuff, EL34s. So it'll work for most stuff that, uh, you know, us guitar players would want to use them for. So uh, it's handy to have. I mean, there's no, there's really no place to go test tubes anymore. You know, it used to be you could go to your, your local hardware store and, and they had tube testers right there. And tubes. You could buy new tubes right there, too, you know. So, uh, these were, like I said, these were a portable version of it. And it's pretty amazing technology, really, when you think about it. And it still works just like it should to this day. I mean, it's flawless. And it's in really good condition. It's got a nice, nice uh, dovetail box. It's in really nice shape too. I got the cover for it too, right over here. The cover fits on real nice. Uh, it's been used, but it's, you know, you can tell whoever owned this took good care of it. I mean, you had to. This, 
if you didn't have this, you were just going to have to guess at what was wrong and start throwing money at a problem. So, yeah, I was just, I got a bunch of old tubes here. Some of these are like really not anything you'd use in amplifiers, but I'm testing a few. I may start building some some pedals with some tube tube in them, you know, like a little preamp boost pedals with a tube in it. I've seen it done. They sell them and stuff. I've never really messed around with that, but I think I could do it easy enough. And I got quite a few of them, so it would be nice to be able to use them for something, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm just kind of noodling around, cleaning up the shop here tonight. It's kind of messy out here. I had it cleaned once, and then I dug this thing out. Now I got books and all kinds of stuff everywhere. But all right, guys, I just thought I'd give you a little, little demonstration, demonstration of it. And you know, you don't see this stuff around much anymore. Like I said, it you you could uh, plug a lot of different styles of tubes in it. It's got a lot of those and. You know, it will test circuits as well, which is nice. I haven't really figured out all the ins and outs of testing circuits with it yet, but it's nice to have that book. I can, I can figure it out pretty easy anyway. Okay, guys, hang in there, and uh, we'll see you guys pretty soon. I got some more stuff coming up, some good videos on repair work and stuff I'm doing, and just bear with me. It's, it's kind of slow right now, but we'll get some good vids out soon. Thanks for watching.